Hi everyone, uh, this is Mary from Rocky Mountain Gardens and I am here today to answer a question. Um, do you think that you have a black thumb because you have brought home a plant from a store and within a few weeks it was dead? Well, if you're confused about how to care for our houseplants, um, this video will help you learn four major tips to keep in mind when you are thinking about getting a house plant collection. So number one is to know your plants. The first thing you should uh, consider is purchasing easy care house plants. Now, I actually have a video on the best house plants to buy for your home, and I'll put a link down below uh, this video so you can watch it if you would like to for uh, the names of the best house plants for any home. I always try to keep in mind that you would like to have plants that are easy care. Easy care is a key because you know that we all have very busy lives and we do not have time to baby uh, specialty house plants. But you can have a beautiful home with houseplants without those, including those uh, more temperamental plants. So know your plants. First, choose your plants wisely, and then realize that when you bring your plant home, it is coming from a nursery uh, where the conditions are absolutely perfect for that plant. The perfect amount of humidity, watering, light, and you know, so on. So it's absolutely perfect. When you bring them to your home, it's going to be a shock to that plant. Um, they have to adjust to the environment in your home, which may be drier. You don't have time to, you know, check over your plant every day and make sure it's healthy because you have your busy life. So, um, just don't be frightened or think you're killing your plant because when you place it in your home, it starts <clears throat> dropping some leaves, turning little brown on the edges of the leaves, things like that. And so just, you need to uh, sort of build up your confidence that you can do this. And that, like I said, when you bring a plant home, from a nursery where it has perfect conditions, it is going to have a shock in this new environment in your home, and you may see some dying back of leaves and so on, and that's perfectly okay, and it doesn't mean your plant is dying. Okay, so that's number one. So number two in caring for house plants is choosing the optimal spot in your home for your plants. So number two is placement. So before you buy plants, check out your house. See which windows face south, which would get the most amount of light, which uh, windows place north, which get the least amount of light during the day. And um, that placement can be determined by the conditions your plant needs for growth. So that seems like a lot of work and a lot of research to do, which is why if you look at my best house plants video, you'll see that the plants that I've chosen for that all can uh, take the low light conditions in most of our homes and don't need to be necessarily in a, in a you know, optimal place. Uh, but, so lighting is one factor. Number two uh, for placement, I would say, is don't choose what I would call a bad place in your home for your plants. A bad place would be next, right next to a heating or an air conditioning vent, or right next to a door where, for example, in the wintertime, it'll get blasts of cold air. That would could be harmful to your plants, particularly because most house plants are tropical plants and therefore they like warmer conditions. Two other points to consider are <clears throat> grouping your houseplants together because then they can share humidity 
And they just seem to do better, just like we do as humans, you know, they don't like to be alone. So being with other plants nearby can help them with their health. So we have grouping your plants together in the same area. And then lastly, once you find a spot for your plant, keep it there. Do not move it. Plants adjust to the location in which they're living. And once they've adjusted, um, they don't like to be moved. They are happy where they are. And if you move them, then it can put them into another state of shock. Now, when I say don't move your house plants around, I don't mean, uh, you know, you can never touch them. Because of the lighting conditions, um, you may find your plant leaning and growing toward the light in extreme cases. So what I do once I find a good spot for my house plant is I leave it there, but I turn it on my watering days, I just turn it. So it is getting light evenly. It just takes, you know, one second, you water your plant and then you turn it. So it's a quick and easy way to keep your plant healthy. Here's an example of grouping plants that I have in my own home. So here you can see a Dracaena, and on the floor right there trailing down is a Moses in the basket plant. And then I'm just going to move myself around here and you'll see on my cabinet I have a jade plant and I have an aloe vera. And then up on top of this cabinet is my variegated English ivy. These five plants all live close together and also make a nice grouping in my home. Just looks pretty and cozy. Number three for introducing houseplants into your home is caring for them. And if you have convinced yourself that you have a black thumb, this is probably the most scary part of uh, having houseplants. Um, there are just a few points to remember, and then houseplant care is actually not hard at all. So we'll start with watering. Now, watering is something uh, people can get really anxious about. They water too much, they watering too little, do I need to water every day, things like that. So my suggestion and what I do is I water only once a week. So I suggest you pick a watering day. My day is Sunday, a day you know when I don't have to go to work. So I have the time to do it. And I just water every single plant on Sunday, get it all done, it's just one of my jobs. And I don't think about it the rest of the week. I don't worry about my plants. I don't hover over them. And uh, you know, they, believe it or not, plants in general are extremely tough they want to survive. And so a little mismanagement by you is not going to harm them in the long run. And if they do uh, maybe not get enough water one week and you water a little more the next week, they will definitely recover. <clears throat> so you have to get go, <clears throat> excuse me, you have to let go of the fear um, that you're going to kill your plants. So that's one thing is watering. I have a nice little watering can here. Some plants need more water, such as this oxalis is a, a more tender plant and it needs more water. On the other hand, this bromeliad, even though it's a tropical plant, actually uh, takes drier conditions. And uh, we'll talk about how to water that. Well, actually, I'll just do it right now. All I do, uh, bromeliads, let me see if I can show you this. You can see here in the center, it almost looks like there's a little cup in the bromeliad in the center of the plant. So all you do is take your watering can and water into the cup. And that's it, you're done, totally done. Easy as pie, it takes, you know, one second. And, uh, the second point that I wanted to talk about with houseplants is their need for humidity. And here in the Rocky Mountains, where we're in a very arid climate anyway, uh, in the winter, you know your homes get really dry. 
Um, I don't worry about humidity too much with my house plants. Uh, they seem to adjust to the conditions in your home, but you can help them out. One way for a plant that does need a little more water, let's see, I'll put this over here, um, is to take a pan like I have here. It's kind of a tin pan that does not, uh, it has a glazed bottom so it won't leak onto my furniture. And you pour water just into gravel. Now, you don't want the water to be uh, all the way up to the top of the gravel because you do not want um, your plant to wick up moisture from the gravel. What you would like to do, and what you're providing here by putting a little water in the gravel and then setting, I'll move this over here and put my bromeliad back on top. The bromeliad is sitting uh, on the gravel and then there's water in the gravel and that can evaporate over the course of the week in between waterings will evaporate up and provide humidity around your plant. So plants that can benefit from some extra humidity, this is one way to offer them that uh, for their health. And that's another easy thing. You put the gravel in, water the plant, pour some water into the gravel underneath the plant each week when you water on Sunday, for example, for me, and you're done. Now, other people like to provide humidity from using a mister. And misting is okay, you know, you can do it. It works, certainly, and plants do love the water. However, if you don't have time, or if you have your plants in an area um, where it's on a wooden table and you don't want that wooden table to be getting wet and having to clean up the mess every week, just don't mist. That's totally okay. Um, your plant, again, will adjust to the drier conditions and it will do just fine. Here's an example of placement in your home where you can help plants that need a little more humidity and you don't want to be bothered with misting or any other special care. Placing them in your bathroom is a great way to provide humidity each day when you take a bath or a shower. So that humidity the plants can absorb. I have a peace lily here and over here you saw a lady palm or sometimes called the bamboo palm. And these get watered once a week, as I said with my other plants, but they do get the benefit of humidity from uh, the bathroom location. Let's discuss the most common houseplant pest. They are called fungus gnats. Little tiny gnats, I'm sure you've seen them flying around your houseplants perhaps in the past. And I have a very easy solution for this problem, and I like it because it is non-toxic and it is, uh, you know, an organic way to deal with these pests. And for example, I have uh, this little jade plant, and I recently noticed some fungus gnats flying around in the area where it lives in my house. So I purchased these little sticky, uh, they're sort of butterfly shaped traps for uh, use with my uh, this little problem I have. I don't have a big infestation, but I would like to catch it before it gets worse. So I bought these, they're called Q traps. I bought them on Amazon. They were not so expensive at all. And they come in a little pack, look like little butterflies with a little uh, uh, Part that you can stick into the soil and that's exactly what you do. So you just pull off this plastic cover and it reveals a butterfly shape that has very sticky substance on it. And then you can actually just insert it into your soil right next to the plant and leave it there and it will catch any of the fungus gnats that are flying around on the sticky part, both sides of the little butterfly shape. Once it gets full, 
you can discard it, wrap it up, put it in your trash, and you will have gotten uh, the fungus gnat problem under control. It's a great tip. Our next step for caring for houseplants is keeping the roots aerated. And um, you know how farmers will cultivate their soil and dig it up and almost sort of like turn it over in order to uh, provide air to the roots of the new plants they're going to plant. Your, in the same way, your house plants, the uh, soil can get very compacted after a year's time and watering and the water it goes through, it will compact your soil down so the roots can't bleed. So my solution to that is taking like a butter knife or you could use a chopstick or any kind of uh, sort of smaller, long, blunter tool. And you can take your butter knife and literally go into the soil and stick your knife in and kind of jiggle it around a little bit to provide some air for the roots in your soil. And you'll find if you do this once a year, it will make quite a difference on uh, your health of your house plants. So this is only one time of year. Watering once a week, uh, cultivating or aerating your roots once a year. You know, you could do it in the springtime maybe when uh, you're thinking about going outdoors again and having fun in the summer. So using some kind of blunt tool, and don't worry if you're breaking through some of the roots when you do this because it really will not harm your plant. The roots will definitely recover and they'll be more happy because they're getting some air down there and, they, and they're uh, having, it's giving the roots the ability to grow and move uh, more easily in that compacted soil. So aerating is another tip. And then I also want to talk about brown tips on your leaves. Um, I don't think either of my plants right here have brown tips, but for example, my peace lily up in my bathroom actually has brown tips on it. Now, uh, people do worry about brown tips. They think their plant is dying, but actually brown tips uh, are very common in house plants. One of the causes can be the dry air. Another cause could be um, having um, or using tap water for watering your plants because tap water has chlorine and fluoride in it. And uh, some researchers have uh, um, thought that that can cause some browning of tips on your leaves. So don't you know get anxious about brown tips. It's pretty normal in a house plant that's growing in a normal home without the high humidity conditions that you would have in a nursery. Um, doesn't mean your plant is dying. And then um, the other thing is that oftentimes leaves will turn brown and start curling. And at that time when you notice it, you can just cut that leaf off. And again, don't worry about it. Leaves do not live forever. Some of them will die over time on your plant and that's perfectly normal and okay. So nothing to be anxious about. Just trim up your plants periodically when you see brown leaves. And actually it'll make your plant more healthy because your plant will not be trying to um, uh, uh, provide for that leaf and make it healthy again. It'll you know, be able to let it go and concentrate on growing new leaves for itself. So brown tips and brown leaves are no worries. And then the last point I want to talk about is fertilizing. Fertilizing your plants is something you should just do two times a year. That's all. Do it one time in the spring and one time in the summer. No fertilizing the rest of the year. During the winter time, your plants are resting and they don't need any fertilizer. So again, we're trying to minimize the work you have to care for your plants and just get yourself on a schedule, spring, summer, fertilize one time each. Now, my uh, choice for fertilizing is this um, indoor fertilizer, and it's made by miracle Grow, but you could use any type that you like. 
for fertilizing. I just like the ease of this because with this uh, particular type of miracle Grow, it has this little pump and you just pump, put little two, you know, pump one, two, three times directly into the soil of your plant. So you would squirt in one, two, three pumps, maybe one on this side, one on that side, one on the back side, and you pump it directly onto the soil, not onto the leaves or the stems, but onto the soil of your plant. And after you've put in the pumps, depending on the size of your plant, a smaller plant in a small pot this size maybe would only need one pump of fertilizer. A medium-sized plant like this might take two. And then if you have a larger plant, like uh, my lady palm up in my bathroom, I put at least three in that one. And after you put the pumps of fertilizer onto the soil, you do your normal watering. So this would be a job on a Sunday, for me anyway. Uh, just do your normal watering. It waters that fertilizer into the soil better, and you're done with fertilizing. So two times a year. And, and again, caring for your plants can be simple. So to uh, go back and recover that, um, water once a week only, pick your watering day, aerate once a year with something like a butter knife, aerate your roots, uh, do the um, Fertilizing twice a year, spring and summer. Just remember those are the growing seasons, so that's when you would fertilize. And then that's it. That's all you need to do for your plants. Otherwise, you just forget about them uh, and their care, except to enjoy them in your home. My last tip for caring for your houseplants is uh, repotting. Now, a lot of new gardeners are very anxious about repotting. They get all worried, oh, my plant is in too small of a pot, I've got to move it now. And again, that's more work, more care, more of your time and your busy schedule. So I just wanted to show you this oxalis plant right here. I recently repotted into this larger pot here, but it lived in this small, little small container for eight years without repotting. So, you know, worrying about, oh, my plant's a little bit tight in the pot, and I better hurry up and repot it. That kind of anxiety is just as necessary with house plants, or any plants, really, uh, even outdoors. So, my oxalis here took this pot for eight years before I finally put it in a larger size pot. And here it is, you can see and it's doing just fine. So don't repot too often, number one. Number two, uh, don't repot in too large of a pot. Oftentimes people will take a, you know, a plant going in a smaller pot like this and put it in a great big pot and they think, oh, now I won't have to repot it you know, for a long, long time because I already put it in a very large pot. But what happens with your plant when you put it in too large of a pot is it expends all of its energy on growing the root system below, you know, spreading out the roots, and all the energy of the plant is used on roots, not on growing new leaves and stems on the top of your plant. So your plant will just sit there, probably for several years, not growing at all, just looking the same. And as I said, mainly that is because its energy is going toward developing roots. So don't use too large of a pot. Then the next consideration is soil. Make sure that you invest in the proper soil for your plant. So normal house plants, I just buy um, regular uh, potting soil for that you can get, you know, in any big box store, Walmart, anywhere. Just buy a normal uh, potting soil. But if you have some uh, special plants like succulents, cacti, orchids, they do need and do better when you do invest in the proper soil. So there are soils made 
specifically uh, for um, succulents and specific soils for, uh, especially for orchids. So if you do enjoy those plants and you have one in, or several and you would like to repot them, I definitely suggest you invest in the proper soil. The last thing about repotting is to know that once you have repotted your plant, you should place it back in the same place it has always lived in your home. And that way it's shock from repotting and uh, so on will be minimized because you put it back in its regular home and it can then start growing again and you know, be beautiful for you. Uh, so that's the repotting portion of this video and tips on that. You have four tips, four major tips for being a successful houseplant owner. And they are, I'm just going to recap really quick, is to know the plant that you're buying, know your plants. Number two, check out and choose the best placement for your plant in your home. Number three, uh, regular care, providing that regular care for your plant is so important and will make you a very successful plant owner. And lastly, don't be too, um, what's that word I want? Don't be too overzealous about repotting and, you know, take your time with that. So those are the four major tips. And if you follow them, you can grow anything. I guarantee it. It's just amazing, as I said, how resilient houseplants and all plants really are. And you can feel confident that you can do it. So get out there, get some houseplants in your home and make your home beautiful and a healthy place to live. Okay, thanks for watching. Until my next video, bye.